G'day guys, Rob here and welcome back to the channel. Now over the last six months or so, I've had a lot of comments from you guys asking me to make a video on how to disassemble a resin model. So that's exactly what today's video is going to be. So I'm going to build another custom model and I'm using a Kyosho Lamborghini sealed resin model as a base for that custom model. So I thought I'd take you along uh, the disassembly process of how to actually pull a resin model apart. Now, 95% of all sealed resin models are basically assembled the same way. So even though today's video, I'm going to be disassembling a Kyosho sealed resin model, this pretty much applies right across the board from cheaper Otto and GT Spirit models, uh, all the way up to BBR models, uh, MR collection models and so forth. So uh, we'll head into the workshop now and I'll show you step by step how to actually disassemble a resin model. So let's go. Okay, so this is the Kyosho Lamborghini Diablo model that I'm going to be disassembling today for a custom model. Uh, now, as I mentioned, all of these models are basically assembled exactly the same way and they're mostly held together with a, uh, like a hot glue, uh, sort of a rubberized style of hot glue that holds all the parts together uh, and it is reasonably easy to pull them apart. Now let's talk about the tools you'll need. Uh, usually a couple of screwdrivers to unscrew the floor of the model. Um, a sharp hobby knife. I use my X-Acto knife here with a number 11 blade. Uh, and I also use this tool which is like a flat opening tool. This actually came out of a mobile phone repair kit that I bought on eBay uh, that had a couple of little fine screwdrivers. You can use a flat bladed screwdriver but that can cause fractures and cracks in the resin so I like to use the um, flat opening tool. Now before we start handling the model too much I'm going to remove this rear wing. Now most of the time these wings are made in separate pieces so the wing blade is separate from the wing legs. Uh, it just depends on the model. Obviously if you're doing a street car and it doesn't have a wing uh, you don't need to do this step. But basically what I'll do is put my fingers un underneath uh, either side of the wing legs and just try and wiggle it backwards and forwards a little bit to break the glue join. Um, it just depends on uh, what sort of glue they use. This one was being quite stubborn. Uh, one side, the wing leg, was still attached to the wing blade. Uh, did chip a little bit of resin away. Um, and the other side is firmly attached into the resin body. So, as I said, just wiggle the part and this will usually break the glue join uh, where it is attached. So you can see that one came out quite easy. It does have a little locating tab in the bottom of the part which locates it onto the body. So that will go into the part storage box to keep everything separated as we go. Now I do like to use a piece of bubble wrap just to protect the paintwork and not to scratch it up too much on my workbench. Uh, even though I will be repainting the model, I still do this step just to protect it. Now the floor on these models are screwed on usually with a couple of screws. Now if the screws don't seem to want to untighten like here, just do the screw up a quarter of a turn and that will break the, um, the bond of the screw and then just go ahead and unscrew it. Now most of the time uh, these flaws in these models are just screwed in. Uh, I have come across a couple of models that have had a little bit of glue underneath them uh, which makes them a little bit more difficult to remove uh, but the majority of the time they will just simply come out when they're unscrewed. So we've just got one more screw to do at the back. We'll just get that out. GT Spirit models are basically the same. Uh, this one is uh, obviously made by Kyosho and they are in partnership on some models with GT Spirit so it was very very similar. Now even though some parts on resin models are a different colour does not necessarily mean that they are a separate piece. Sometimes they are cast into the actual uh, body of the car and not a separate piece but 
this rear diffuser seems like it is a separate piece you've just got to try and find and see if there is a little bit of a, a join where they will come apart uh, and just again just give the parts a little bit of a wiggle uh, to try and remove them that seems quite stubborn at this stage so I'm going to try and attempt to lift the floor out now what you can do here is just see how loose it is a lot of the time these resin models especially GT Spirit ones the interior tub of the model is actually part of the floor so you will be removing the floor and the interior in the same step but what I want to do is not actually use too much pressure because I don't want to break the resin part now resin can be brittle and it can crack which is why I just uh, try and lever it up slowly and I work around the whole entire uh, area of the floor to try and loosen it as you can see I'm leaving the screwdriver in one side just to keep a little bit of pressure uh, in that part of the model and yeah you've just got to work out what is attached to what and go from there now I'm just going to continue to work around the floor here just to try and pick this up this seems really tight on this model compared to some some models the parts come out really really easy uh, sometimes they are a little bit more stubborn now I can definitely feel on this one that there is a lot of bulk to the floor ah, there we go that little rear diffuser a little bit of pressure on there and that's just come out so again you can see the little locating tabs on there which hold it in place uh, and that enables me to get a bit more of a grip now you don't want to force it again because you may snap the floor in half so you've just got to take your time with it and slowly pry it out you can also make sure you've got a good work light so that you can actually uh, have a little bit of a peek in between the floor and the body to see what you're dealing with and again here I'm just running the spatula along the side just to slowly lift up the floor section uh, to open it up a little bit more patience is the key here I usually go a little bit slower uh, but I don't want to make this video one hour long so I'm sort of speeding through this process a little bit but I am starting to loosen it all the way around I'm assuming at this stage there is a little bit of hot glue uh, that has dripped down on something that is making it a bit more resilient to wanting to come out um, but I'm just using my prying method having a little bit of a look I can see there's a blob of glue in there uh, which is stopping this floor coming out as easy as it should but just continuing to pry the model open not putting too much pressure on the actual body of the model because I don't want to snap a floor or snap a corner off because I want to be able to put this model back together uh, how it was made by the factory now it is starting to loosen up a little bit more it is starting to drop out I can feel it uh, and a little bit of pressure and I should be able to remove the floor again a little bit of levering but not too much I don't want to break the resin floor and I don't want to break the resin body either but the, I can see there's a little bit of glue in underneath this floor section uh, that is stopping this coming out so it's just a matter of keep prying it around either side and just trying to break that glue join now the hot glue that they use is uh, reasonably strong to hold the model together um, but it is easy to pry it apart as well so you can see this section here that's the side of the interior tub so it looks like it is a separate piece on this model but it is glued to the floor so hence as you can see here it's just come loose and the floor is actually a separate piece to the interior pan but they are glued together so you can see this big glob of glue here that is what was holding this floor and interior pan into the body making it a little bit more difficult uh, to remove because as you are trying to remove the floor uh, the interior tub glue was holding it in place so it is like a hot glue whether it's a white clearish color like this or whether it is a yellowish color hot glue it is still a hot glue 
So there's not much I'm going to do to the interior on this model, but I will eventually separate it uh, from the interior pan. Uh, the interior obviously got assembled into the model first, and then the floor was glued on last step. Um, so you can always run a knife down the side and just use your prying tool uh, to slowly separate those as well. So I'll do that one a little bit later. Uh, we'll just remove these exhaust tips now. I think they are a molded separate piece. So it's just a matter of sometimes finding where the join is. Uh, I can see there. Yeah, the actual looks like the exhaust uh, is basically molded as one piece. So both sides, that doesn't want to seem to come off too easy. Yeah, that that is either part of it. No, I can see what's going on here. Um, there's actually a little joiner in the middle there which is part of those exhaust tips. So uh, I'm just going to put my little pry tool in the middle uh, and that should pry off the exhaust tips. And that's starting to come loose now. And there we go. So yeah, what look like the white exhaust pipes were separate pieces, they're actually joined by that little matte black joiner piece on there as well. So that's a that's a win there so we'll just put that one to the side I won't be using that rear diffuser but we can put it in the parts box maybe able to use it for something else so yeah at a latter stage I will actually pry that interior pan uh, away from the floor panel just work that glue out there's obviously a couple of dobs of hot glue underneath there as well um, and probably a good idea to hold that floor flat on the workbench uh, so that when you do any prying it doesn't break anything. Now this is what the inside of a sealed resin model looks like. So for most people that pull it apart for the first time they're a bit horrified um, and you can see here uh, why the wheels don't turn on a lot of models as the axle is just hot glued in place. Now this moves a little bit because I've already removed the floor um, but to remove the wheels if there's not too much hot glue on there, I'll just grab the top of the tire and pry the axle out, as you can see here. So there was not too much hot glue on here. Some models I've pulled apart, there's just been so much hot glue, I've had to cut most of it away with the knife before I could get the axle out. Um, and you can see these little slots there. So uh, there's a little locating tab uh, on the hub assemblies here. You can see that little tab there that actually slides down into that slot and locates the axle uh, and the right orientation of the brake calipers uh, into the model body. So um, that's what sets the height as well. Now to re remove the wheels from the axle, just grab a tire each side, a wheel, and just twist in opposite direction, pulling out at the same time, uh, and they will come off the axle. Now you can see the little hub assembly there is loose, uh, so it is possible to re-glue these models back together again and have turning wheels, uh, and to get the other wheel off I just hold the axle with my little nippers there. So yeah, you can see the brake assembly uh, on there with the caliper. There's always a stem on the back of the wheel uh, which slips inside that hub assembly and then the metal axle slips into the uh, stem on the wheel. So as I said it is possible to uh, refit the wheels and make them spin just by not gluing around the axle and just re-glue the hub section in only. Now same process for the rear wheels. There was not too much glue on this particular model uh, so I was able just to use a little bit of force with my fingers and pull that axle out of the body. Uh, and that's exactly the same way. Just twist the wheels either side uh, to remove them from the metal axle. And there we have it. So pretty easy thing to do. Uh, I have done a video on swapping wheels on a resin model. Uh, that's in the how-to playlist. So if you're interested to see how to do that conversion, uh, just watch that video. 
But uh, yeah, that's as easy as that to remove the wheels. Uh, this custom model, I'm going to change the wheels on it, but I will reuse the tyres. Uh, and to me, on a sealed resin model, I don't care too much if the wheels don't turn, so they will just be glued back in uh, as per Kyosho did it. So we'll just put those to the side, and now we'll have a look at the body. Now as you can see here, uh, the dashboard is held in by some blobs of hot glue as well. Now to remove the dashboard, you need to basically cut that hot glue away. And then the dashboard will be able to be removed. Now that's how they glue all of these models together, just pretty crude. Uh, they look nice from the outside, these resin models, but when you open them up and have a look, uh, they do look a little bit horrific. Uh, but that's how they're all made. Now to remove the windows, uh, these are held on by a real tiny little bead of the same type of glue around the perimeter of the window. Uh, and I usually just push those from the inside out, um, but I may just remove these mirrors first. So you can see the black matte black part uh, on the A pillar there. That is part of the body, but the mirror is loose. So uh, these are just put on by a dob of hot glue as well. As you can see, quite stringy, um, but that is all that is required to remove the mirrors. So if you're trying to remove more of a delicate mirror, um, then definitely maybe use the hobby knife under the base of it and just try and wiggle it around a little bit uh, until you can separate it from the body. But usually not too hard because uh, I only use a very tiny drop of that glue to hold the mirror in place as you can see there. So a little bit of a clean up before the model is painted and uh, we'll be able to make that good as new. Now the windows, I just start at the top or where I can get a clean uh, run with my fingers and I just basically push it from the inside out keeping pressure on the outside of the window as well. I don't want to crack the window, although most of these resin models have a very thin plastic for the windows, so they do come apart pretty easy. Uh, you just don't want to uh, crack or put a crease in the window. So you can see there, windows starting to come away from the body, and it's just a matter of working all the way around. So I'll do the whole top edge first, and then I'll go down the side also and work it down to the front. So I want to get pretty much all the top and the sides removed. You can see the little stringy strands of glue in there. Once you get most of the window free, uh, it's pretty easy to get out. But yeah, you can see those stringy bits of glue holding the window together. You can run your finger through there and just uh, it'll break those little strings. And then when most of the window is out on three sides, I basically hold the window with both hands and slowly pull it away from the body of the model. And there you have it, one window out. So you can see the uh, stringy bits of glue on there. You can basically remove those with your fingernail, um, but they are quite rubbery, the glue as well. So you can usually grab a little bit of the glue and just pull it away in strands but definitely want to make sure you remove all that glue residue uh, before you repaint the model because you don't want that underneath your new paint because then when you go to re-glue your windows back into the model uh, it just won't sit in there flush. So just going to repeat that same process on the other side just keeping pressure on both sides of the windows with your fingers and just slowly work it away from the model. Just take your time with it and you will find that they do come out reasonably easy. So there you go, that's the second window out of the model. Uh, I'll clean all the glue off these parts at a latter stage. Now usually at this stage, depending on the model, you're able to actually remove the front window uh, with the same process. It's going, it's going going to be a little bit harder on this Kyosho Lamborghini model because the dashboard uh, is so big and I don't really have uh, a clear run with my fingers uh, at this front window. So 
Um, before I attempt to do too much more here, I might actually try and remove uh, the dashboard because I'm not having much luck where the steering wheel is to get that corner out. But you can see again the little strands of glue in there that are holding it in place. You can use your knife as well uh, to cut those little strands just to break them loose. Uh, just make sure that you don't cut towards the window uh, because you don't want to put a, a knife cut or a scratch in the window. But yeah, that's oh, there's the rear vision mirror come off. That was pretty easy. Just a tiny little piece of glue holding that in place. So that was pretty easy to remove. Uh, and it's pretty easy to get the left hand side of the window out. But the, the other side near the driver, that's proving a little bit more difficult just with access issues. I can't get a clear run in the corner with the finger. So I think the best way now is to actually pull the dashboard out. And what we have to do there, just use, make sure you're using a sharp X-Acto knife, but be very careful with these uh, blades. They are extremely sharp. You don't want to slice yourself open. So just always uh, be very careful with these hobby knives. And just, I like to score either side uh, of the, where this glue has been squeezed into and then just use my flat bladed screwdriver and just try and pry that glue out. Now on some of the GT Spirit models I've pulled apart uh, the glue is actually quite firm and solid and it comes out very easy. The glue in this model seems to be quite rubbery still uh, which is making it a little bit more difficult to pry out as the harder glue uh, tends to come out very very easy. Just take your time, work it out. If, if you can't lever it out uh, just use your hobby knife again and try and cut uh, a bit deeper and try and get the edges of all the glue where it's penetrated under the edges uh, and then you should be able to pry it out pretty easy. It's starting to come out now there we go so you can see it's just hot glue heaven and there's a little bit of glue on the sides as well that were holding the axle in so when the hot glue is hot uh, it just runs down into those areas you never see it so they're never too careful or neat with that sort of thing but it does come out so there's another blob out and that's starting to look clean and now I'll just get that little bit of glue out of the other side as well so just cutting it out of that slot area and you'll feel when it's actually getting quite loose you'll feel the part moving around as you're trying to cut the glue out so definitely uh, you get a feel for it the more of these models you pull apart so just keep cutting slicing and prying to try and remove all of that glue because it does run down into the little edges. Just going to cut this a little bit deeper. Just pry a little bit more residue out. And there we go, I can feel it move already. So there it is, that is the hot glue removed that is holding the dashboard in. Now one thing that's stopping that dashboard coming out is the side door trims. Obviously they go in after the dashboard goes in first, then the door trims go in after that. Now the door trims actually have a little locating tab on the back of those and there's a little locating tab recess on the inside of the body shell as well. So what I'll do, these are hot glued on as, as well, just run my knife down the side there to try and break through and then again using my little uh, flat spatula I don't want to push it all the way down, I want to relieve the pressure on the edge so I just work along the edge of the door trim and this will start to separate it along the length of the part. If you just try and pry one end up you will end up just snapping the door trim in half. So you can see there not quite coming up so I'll just keep working it along until it's loose give it a wiggle that usually breaks the hot glue join dashboard falls out 
Now the dashboard, again, this one's pretty simple, but the steering wheel and steering column are separate pieces. You can see the chunks of hot glue still on there. We'll get rid of those. Um, and yeah, the steering wheel and the steering column, separate little pieces. Uh, if I'm not repainting it, I will just leave that on there. You can actually get the steering wheel and turn it left to right. That will start to loosen the glue join. Uh, and the same, if you can't release the steering column, you can always run a hobby knife through that and just cut the locating tab off that and remove that. And then you can just glue butt join it back together again. So you can see that little recess on the inside of the body there. Uh, that is to mate up with that little locating tab on the inside of the door trim. Now every resin model I've pulled apart uses exactly that same method. It's so that when they uh, assemble these models in the factory, uh, they know exactly where it goes. They put some glue on the back of the door trim uh, and just make sure it fits into that little lug and then it's in the right place. So again, I'll clean all that hot glue off the back of the door trims and out of that body uh, before I actually glue that back into the model. And before I actually pull the window out, I'll remove that windscreen wiper. Now I'll just use my hobby knife for this one and I'll just cut away from the window. Uh, there's only a small drop of glue on that holding it in place and I'll just lever the windscreen wiper up with the hobby knife you can see there, there was only a tiny bit of glue holding that in place, but always cut away from the window just so that you don't uh, put a knife cut or a scratch in the window. Then I'll just continue with that same method as I did with the side windows. I'll just push the window from the inside out, putting a bit of pressure on there with my finger on the outside as well, just trying to control that push Again, run the hobby knife through very carefully just to cut any of those little stringy strands of glue and just work my way around the window. That's starting to come loose now. <clears throat> so just keep working all the way around try and start from the corners and then through the middle and just till you work it all the way around the sides of the window. Any stringy strands there just cut them out uh, with the hobby knife until you release the window and there you have it front window out so again you can see the little stringy strands of glue left on there Again, you can grab some of that glue and just peel it away. Otherwise, just use the hobby knife and some tweezers and you'll be able to pull the rest of that residue away. So that is most of the bits. The emblems on the front, uh, you can never remove those. They are so thin, just decals. You'll never get a knife underneath uh, and pull those off in one piece. Uh, so when I repaint the model, I'll just replace the logo. Some models they are printed on, some are just very thin decals. As you can see there, I just scratched that off with my fingernail. That was just a very thin decal. Now the grills, I'll use my X-Acto knife again uh, and just get the point of the knife underneath the metal. They usually come away pretty easy. And then once I get my point of the knife underneath, I'll just run the blade around the edge and that will start to separate the piece as you can see there. There's not much glue on these pieces so there's, they're pretty easy to get out. And then I'll just go around the rest of the model as well. Uh, where there's not a open grill and it still is a uh, metal looking grill like this rear one here, uh, that is just straight up hot glued onto the resin body. So just find the easiest point to get the tip of your knife in there. Run the knife around there and that will separate the part. There we go, popped off. Let me just grab that. And that is removed. Now I'll go through the rest of the model as well. Got some more grills underneath here on the radiators. So just find where there's a bit of a gap. Run the knife away around 
and you can actually pull those grills out. We'll just do the same on the other side here and we'll get this one out. Now all these resin models are put together the same way so you've just got to be a little bit delicate with the knife. That's why these number 11 blades are really good for disassembling these models uh, because the tip of the blade is so fine that you can get it in underneath an edge. So that's another grill out. Now the tail lights, uh, it depends on the model. Sometimes uh, the tail light itself is actually glued in uh, and sometimes the surround is a loose part. Just because a part on a resin model is painted a different colour does not mean that it's a separate part. Sometimes it is a cast part of the body. So you've just got to try and see if there's any movement in the part. If you can get it in the join and it loosens a little bit, then you know it's a separate part. If you put your knife blade into the join of something and it just doesn't seem like it's budging, it's more than likely cast as part of the body. But these seem like they're starting to lift up, so I can tell that they are actually a separate piece. So the tail lights and the surround is actually one piece. So if we pull that out, you'll see that. And they actually paint the inside edge silver uh, to make the lights look brighter than they are. So now I know that's a separate piece, I'll go ahead and I'll remove this side as well. Now depending on the model, if you're not doing a supercar and something else, uh, if there is a tail light in place that does not need to be removed, uh, I won't remove it, I'll leave it there, but if I need to pull it out, I'll pull it out. Now even though this model does not have headlights, uh, it's the same method for the window. So you would put your tip of your blade underneath the clear cover, remove that, and then pry away the headlight lenses as well. Now on this model, these actually look like separate pieces, but my method is to put a hobby knife in there. If there's absolutely no movement and it wants to chip the resin, then I know that it is actually uh, cast into the body. These little lenses come out very easy, all of them. There's just an absolute tiny little drop of glue on these to hold them in. So I'll pull the spotlight covers out. And the turn signal indicators as well. Uh, they'll come out pretty easy too. So yeah, working on this little tow hook here. This is a little metal tow hook. Uh, that will have a little locating tab on the back of it as well. Just give it a little bit of a wiggle. Uh, this seems to be quite stubborn, so just going to find a little screwdriver here in my box. There we go. And I'm just going to put it through the hole, and I'm going to use a little bit of pressure and pull it out. That way it doesn't go flying off in my model room and I can't find it again. Uh, and there you can see there's a little locating tab on it. And that was just glued into the body as well. Now that is a lot of the body disassembled. There are some little side markers here, so they're very easy to pull off. Just put your hobby knife sideways through that, uh, and that will remove that little side indicator. Put that in the parts box as well. And do the other side too, so I don't lose that one. There we go, pretty easy to remove. And any other accessories like this little fuel cap here, uh, I can tell that's a separate piece. So I just try and find where there's a bigger gap. So there's a little bit of a bigger gap on this side. Put my hobby knife underneath and just slowly lever it up. Now sometimes they are molded into the body and they're just hand painted, but a lot of the times they are a separate piece as well. So as you can see, that is most of the uh, parts removed from the body. I do have a third brake light on here as well. Now sometimes these are just a decal, sometimes they are painted on. I think this one's coming loose. There we go. So this is just made out of a little piece of metal and it's painted red. Uh, so I was able to remove that and put that in the parts box.
Now as you can see, uh, there's not too much to these particular resin models once you start pulling them apart compared to a fully die cast opening model that has lots more parts. Um, but there's just a few little pieces of mesh on here as well in these side vents. And again, just find where you can get the uh, knife in underneath those and remove those. There's also some in the side skirts here too. But uh, yeah, as far as the glue goes, uh, it is quite easy to remove. It is just a bit stringy, but it does hold things firmly together. So um, just take your time, work through it, and yeah, you'll be all right. So that is basically how you disassemble a resin model. So uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments section below, but, but basically just take your time uh, and don't force anything unnecessarily. When it's starting to come apart, you will feel it when you're using your tools uh, to remove it, but it is relatively straightforward. And then you can get into the customizing. So yeah, give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and uh, plenty more tutorials on the way. So uh, stay tuned for what this is going to become as well. Um, but until next time, uh, stay tuned for more tutorial videos and thanks for watching Rob's Model Cars.